The portion of Tetzave is primarily dedicated to the vestments, to the garments, to the clothing of the Kohanim, the priests, and the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. Yet, at the beginning and the end of the parasha, there seems to be something totally out of order, and that is, it talks about the lighting of the menorah. And the end of the parasha talks about the golden altar. Now, both of these teachings should have been spoken about in the previous parasha, in the portion of Teruma, which talks about the vessels of the Holy Temple. So Truma is dedicated to the vessels of the Holy Temple, and Tetzave is dedicated to the vestments of the Holy Temple, to the garments of the Holy Temple. Yet, for some reason, at the beginning of Tetzave and the end of Tetzave, we talk about the menorah, and we also talk about the golden altar. <clears throat> so first, we need to understand what is unique about the golden altar. In the, in the Mizbeach, in the Mishkan, in the tabernacle, there were two altars. There was one menorah, there was one table, there was one ark, but there were two altars. Interesting. One altar was outside, upon which you brought meat, the animal sacrifices, and the other altar was in the inside, where you brought ketores, which is incense, on the altar. Now, you were not allowed to bring any animal sacrifice upon this golden altar. The animal sacrifices were only on the outside. Our rabbis teach us that prayer takes the place of sacrifices. So today, we have in the Holy Temple, when we pray every day, it's like offering a sacrifice onto the altar. What is the word for sacrifice in Hebrew? The word is karban. Karban. Karban means literally to come close to, karov, to get close to God. Through prayer, we get very close to God. That is the idea of prayer. It's spiritual intimacy. However, there are two levels to prayer. There's the Mizbeach Hazov and the Mizbeach Hanachoshes, the outside altar and the inside altar. We also have two levels of our heart, the external part of our heart and the internal level of our heart. Sometimes you tell a person, I love you. It's from the external part of the heart. Sometimes you tell a person, I love you. It's coming from the internal part of the heart. In prayer, in prayer, sometimes we are talking to God, we're communicating, but it's from the outside of the heart, the external part of the heart. There's no real deep, passionate relationship. It's lip service, there's a communication, there's a conversation, there's a dialogue, but there's no deep, passionate relationship. That is the outside altar. That is the altar of bronze. However, the inside altar... The Mizbeach Hazav represents a deep relationship, a deep connection between a person and God. Now, this idea of a direct personal connection between a person and God is also the definition of the word Ketores. Ketores externally means incense, or literally, so to speak, means incense. However, on a deeper level, or Aramaic, the word ketores means a knot, to create a bond, a knot that is inseparable. Bechad ketira es ketanibe, as Rabbi Shun Bayechoi said, with one knot, am I knotted to God? So the word ketores represents this deep, passionate, intimate relationship that each person can have with God every day when they pray. But you first start with the outside altar, and then you move into the inside altar. Furthermore, we find in the Holy Temple, the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, did not rest until they actually offered the incense. Which means they built the temple, and they prepared everything properly, and all the Kohanim were wearing their garments, 
and they offered animals on the outside altar. They lit the menorah. However, until the actual kotores was offered, God did not dwell in the temple. So how does God dwell in our personal temple? Each person is a temple. When we offer kotores, when we have this direct bond with Almighty God. Furthermore, the Torah says in this week's parasha, this temple, which is called the Oyal Moyed, God says, "Vnei aditi shama levnei Israel." I will meet, I will make myself known to the people of Israel there, in that temple. I will meet with them. I will have that relationship with them, in the temple. And I will dwell amongst them through that temple. So this is the, the advantage of the katores, of the incense, over all the other services in the temple. It represents this intimate relationship with God, which now also explains, even though the, the actual place where the golden altar should be mentioned in the Torah is the previous parsha, it is mentioned in this parsha. To tell us, because it's out of sequence, that we have to think deeper and ask ourselves why. Why is it here and not there? And this all comes together with the name of the parsha, The word titzavah, the atta titzavah. Again, what does titzavah mean? On a simple level, it means you shall command. It's titzavah, like the word mitzvah. On a deeper level, Tzitzava means tzavtza v'chibur, which means connection. Connection and bonding and oneness. This is a parsha that is all about bonding one with the other. And that is why the golden altar is in this parsha. Because the golden altar is all about tzitzava, is all about becoming one with God. Furthermore, what is the size of the golden altar? It's one amma by one amma. The idea of one represents one God, but also it represents the essence of God, the highest level of God. And this connects with the oneness of every Jew. In other words, we are five levels of the soul. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama, Chaya, Yechida. The highest level is called Yechida, from the word Echad. Unique and one. That is the part that is one with God. Each of us have this level. We have to access the level. We have to reveal that level. But every Jew by nature is born with that soul and has that ability to become one with God. Furthermore, on the, on the golden altar, they brought 11 spices. Now, in Judaism, we know the number 10 is holy. 10 is a minion, 10 commandments, etc., etc., a levin represents the essence. Antuchad v'loi b'chushban. As we find in Kabbalah, we say, God, you are one, but you are beyond number. So the number 11 represents this oneness, which is beyond number. So through offering the katores, the incense on the altar every day, one becomes one with God. Finally, when the incense was offered we find a very interesting law. And that is, no one was allowed to be in the actual sanctuary, in the Hechel, and between what we call the Ulam and the altar, when the incense was being offered. Only that one Kohen and God. Furthermore, even the angels had to leave. Even the angels had to leave the temple at that moment when the, when the Kohen, when the priest would light the Ketores, because the Ketores means oneness. It's an intimate relationship. There's no one supposed to be around when you're having intimacy. Right. It's you right. and God. Yeah. So this is the power of the Ketores. Yet the Torah connects this with the lighting of candles. Now there's an argument do you light the candles first and then you bring the ketores or is it another way, etc., etc.? In other words, 
In the morning, you prepare the menorah. You first prepare five candles. Then you light the katoris. Then you prepare the other candles, the other two candles. Why is the katoris intertwined with the lighting of the menorah? Now, even according to Abishol, who says we light the katoris after we prepare all seven candles, he still says it's connected with the candles. It's not in between, it's after, but yet it's also within the close proximity. So why does the Torah connect these two mitzvot, one with the other? And the answer is as follows. The lighting of the menorah in the Holy Temple, we discussed this many times in the past, was not to create physical light. And it was not to bring light into the Temple. The purpose of lighting the menorah in the temple was to bring light into the entire world. It was a source of light and spirituality and godliness for the entire world. As God said, I dwell here in the temple. That's my home. So how do we take that inspiration? How do we take that holiness? How do we take that sanctity? How do we take that divinity that is so revealed and apparent in the holy temple? and disperse it throughout the entire world. That is done by lighting the menorah in the Holy Temple. The light shines forth and brings and disseminates this oneness of the katores, this oneness of the incense throughout the entire world. And that's why it's connected with the lighting of the menorah. Furthermore, in the Holy Temple, it says that the windows were called shkufim atumim, they were wide on the outside and narrow on the inside because the objective was to spread the light outward, not inward. So this is the message of the parasha, Tetzavah. At the beginning of Tetzavah, we talk about the menorah. At the end of Tetzavah, we talk about the menorah. And also, we talk about the katoris because it's one thing. It's about bringing the light to the rest of the world. However, this is done with the lighting of the katores, with this direct, unique relationship that each and every one have with God, but to take that relationship, to take that inspiration, and to share it with the rest of the world. Don't keep it to yourself. Make it known to others. Inspire others as well. Yes, you have to have your personal relationship with God. But after you have that personal relationship with God, now it's your job to light the menorah. Now it's your job to take that inspiration and spread it wide throughout the entire world. Now, this also explains why we say every day in our prayers the commandment of the incense. And we also talk about Abaye, as we said earlier, who quotes the opinion of Abba Sha'ul. Now we said that Theoretically, the opinion is not like Abba Shaul. So why yet do we recite every day the statement of Abaye in the name of Abba Shaul? Now listen to this. this. This is what we call a bit mystical and homiletical. The name Abaye stands for Asher Becha Yerucham Yosem. It's a verse in Hosea, chapter 14, verse number 4, which means that you, God, you have mercy upon the orphan. Now, Abaye was called by this name as an acronym for this verse, Asher Becha Yerucham Yasum, because his father died before he was born, and his mother died at childbirth. So he was raised as an orphan all his life. And so they called him Abaye. In other words, the only one who could really take care of you and console you and raise you as God. That was the meaning of Abaye. And therefore, in our prayers, we hint that even though we're talking about the Katoris, and even though we're talking about the incense, and we're talking about the temple, and we're talking about this intimate relationship that every one of us has with God, 
we have to know that today we are Abaye. We are orphans. We are orphans who have been exiled from the table of our Father, Almighty God. We are still in exile. We don't see the Third Holy Temple. We don't see godliness in a revealed way and fashion. Then we are all still orphans. And that is also the name of Abba Shaul, Abba's father, Abba. Our, our father, Shaul, Shaul means he is borrowed. If we need him, we have to borrow him because he's not right here. He's in a distant place. He's somewhere else. We have to borrow him. We got to bring him back. But right now, all of us are in a state of gullus, in a state of exile. All of us are true orphans. So even though we read the part of the Ketores of the incense, and we say, yes, every Jew can have this personal relationship to God, even today, after we say all of these teachings and all the readings of the Torah and the written law and the oral law, we end off by saying, Abaye, we're still in Golos. We still have problems. There's still war in the world. There's still pain and suffering. There's still sickness and death. And therefore, this creates a deep emotional desire and awakening that we pray to God to bring about the end of suffering, the end of war, the end of pain, the end of sickness, and to bring about the ultimate geula, the ultimate redemption. It's interesting to note that at this talk that the Rebbe said about Abba Shoal, this was the second to the last talk that he gave, that he edited. After that, he had a stroke, implying that right now we are in a generation of, of Abaye. So all of us are in a state of orphans, and therefore we have to call out from God from the depth of our hearts to, to bring an end to all this pain and suffering and to bring about the, the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days.